But it was almost when we look back now, when that was actually introduced, that was uh, delivered by the Oxdales National Park, uh, mm -hmm. called the Limestone Country Project. And when we look back now, that that being involved in that is really what's changed our whole philosophy in terms of how we farm. We learned through being part of that that farming and farming in conjunction with nature and farming for biodiversity was not only possible but it was for us it was more fulfilling because we felt we were um, working with nature much better and we were starting to see biodiversity return to the farm but what we also realized that it was a more profitable way of farming then that industrial type building is almost not used nowadays in the way that we farm and and because it was actually putting animals inside the building that's expensive it's it's a long winter you 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 it's all cost basically whether it's the feed that you're putting into them the bedding that you're putting into them the muck you're getting out of there and so that all makes things the margins really tight so we've now got cattle that live outside all year round we graze them in a way which we think is really good for nature we do lots of work in terms of reducing our impact on on climate change and and that's kind of where we're at at the moment but it was that limestone country project that started that journey down a completely different route I think why it becomes divisive and especially the rewilding stuff um, because I, th I think and, and people find what I say they find it as a little bit offensive that somebody's saying that what we've done for 70 years hasn't necessarily been right and and that isn't what I'm saying I'm just saying time moves on things change all the time um, and we've got to be accepting of that we're living in a different world now to what we were post-war and we're living in a different world now to what we were 10 years ago and we've got to ad adapt and we've got to change and we've got to farm for where we're at now rather than thinking this is what we've done for 50 years we've got to continue with that from my perspective what we've kind of done and i, I always sort of talk about the last 50 years which is 7, 1970 to 2020 where the nature of that farming changed to such an extent to using fertilizers to using tractors for one thing which are which are burning fossil fuels all, all the time um, using pesticides and we're much more able now to get into every single corner of a field we we, we use every bit of area now for, for food production so the the room for nature has got has shrunk and shrunk and shrunk and we're using techniques which aren't great for either the environment or for or for nature talking about my mum and dad in 1987 not being able to make money out of farming and i know that the position I was in sort of 10, 15 years ago, farming conventionally, I know that I wasn't making money then. Mm. Um, I was productive and I was, had a lot of income, but I wasn't making a lot of money. Mm. And that's putting subsidies to one side. Mm. Uh, so, you know, for, for us, I felt we just had to change and, and do things different. And again, that was all experimental, but it's, um, but there's no doubt that subsidies have kept farmers in business and 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 again that's a massive threat and um you know you look at your balance sheet and whatever it is you're receiving bps which is the basic payment scheme it could be 20 30 40 000 pound take that off your bottom line and it doesn't look that pretty and um and so that's that's another threat that's on the horizon uh, and at the moment we don't quite know what's going to replace that in terms of you know we've sort of talking about going down an environmental route and being paid for what we kind of produce if that's the right word for the environment mm -hmm. but nobody quite knows where that is at the moment um so they, they are in certain term un uncertain times but i i personally find that quite exciting mm -hmm. um a because it's going in a direction which i believe is a more right way uh, which is taking the, the environment into account and um and doing things for the environment because ultimately we've got to do that otherwise where are we in 20 years time what i think we've done and i, I, I don't mean to say this in an arrogant way or whatever I, I think we've actually put the farm itself into a profit making situation if we go back to 20 2010 2012 where we were far, farming the sheep especially more conventionally um we were we were doing lots and lots of work on the sheep enterprise literally 70 80 hours a week um and in 2012 i know exactly what it was because that was almost the defining time for us we looked much closely at our figures extrapolated everything out analyzed each enterprise and realized that i was doing 70 80 hours a week an income of about 80,000 from the sheep enterprise but we made we, we made 478 
pounds that year wow. for, from the sheep enterprise from an income of like 80,000 mm. so it was at that time and then so like the beef the cattle enterprise which was really just there for conservation grazing reasons and we just thought they were just sort of up on the hills doing their thing that had an income of about 20 grand and that was making 11 mm. so 11,000 so you know he had these two enterprises one which was just like a really there for conservation reasons but it was actually paying as well it wasn't making a massive amount it wasn't necessarily making as a living but it was making a lot more lot more than sheep enterprise was and a lot more per hour of time that i put into it but it goes completely against and it's completely counterintuitive to think you're making more money out of less animals yeah. and and we're producing and supposedly we're producing less we're producing less as well and so we're producing less food effectively so people say well you're not producing enough to feed the country mm. and we go back to the previous argument which is well we can concentrate on re reducing waste and eating less what is happening on a lot of farms and there's a lot of sort of evidence to suggest this is a case so and it was where we were at in that sort of 2010 stage was you know we're making possibly 11 grand in total on the farming but then we had a bps check come in which made it up to making a living basically so we were able to continue producing that food producing an amount of food which kept which kept the price of food cheaper so that suited governments because there was less inflation and there was plentiful amounts of food being produced so you can almost argue that the bps is to is to pay farmers to keep producing food basically and that's kind of fair enough um, but what we're finding now that they actually some of the techniques that were employed doing that were damaging for biodiversity and and, and the environment so and that's effectively why the bps is changing because that's sort of that's a lesson that's been learned over the last 20 years we sort of get into that stage where you know these cows can exist in on, on this hill pretty much 90 percent of the time without us needing to be involved in their lives and that's how we like it but it's how the cows like it as well you know we obviously manage them we obviously we we check them it's not on a daily basis but it'd be three or four times a week and but then that's just to make sure that they're in our fields and they're the right way up